Hello guys. In the previous two videos of this chapter, we learned about the subatomic particles in detail. We discussed about the electrons, the protons, the neutrons, their properties, who discovered them, and how they were discovered. Let's have a quick look on what we have learned till now. Electrons were discovered by J.J. Thomson. The experiment was called cathode ray discharge tube experiment. Charge and mass of electrons were determined. Protons were discovered by Goldstein. The experiment was called an ordinary experiment. Charge and mass of protons were determined. Neutrons were discovered by J. Chadwick through the bombardment of beryllium with alpha particles. Charge and mass of neutrons were determined. So, let's come on the second portion of our chapter, which is of atomic models. In this portion, we will be discussing the postulates, the limitations, and the concepts of atomic models proposed by Democritus, John Dalton, J.J. Thompson, Ernst Rutherford, Niels Bohr, and Schrodinger. Let's begin with the Democritus atomic model. Democritus was an ancient Greek philosopher who proposed the concept of atoms. He gave the word atomos. He suggested that when an element is divided and further divided and further divided, a stage is reached where it can't be divided any further. The point on this stage was given the Greek word atomos, meaning indivisible. Through this Greek word, the current word atoms came into existence. He gave few points. So, the postulates of his theory was matter is made up of atoms. All matter Everything is made up of atoms. And atoms are indestructible. That is indestructible. Mm. In destructible. Atoms are indestructible. That means they can't be destroyed. Also, atoms are solid but invisible. He also suggested that atoms differ in size, mass, properties, position and arrangement. So atoms were different. He suggested nothing else. And the things which he suggested was having no experimental evidence. The definitions he gave was too general. And it was only a thought experiment at that time. So, due to absence of experimental evidences, this theory was rejected. Next came the Dalton's atomic theory. Dalton was the first scientist that gave a proper theory on atoms or on the existence of atoms. He was able to give some scientific evidence of the postulates he proposed. So, the first postulate was all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. Everything, the entire matter is made up of tiny particles which is indivisible and is called atoms. The food you eat, the water you drink, the sofa on which you are sitting, everything is made up of atoms. Also, atoms only participate in chemical reactions. For example, there is a chemical reaction. See, I am just reading, uh, writing the reaction. C plus O2 to give CO2. Here, the atoms are getting participated. Atoms of carbon, atoms of oxygen, Combined in the form of a molecule of an oxygen, 
will give the product CO2. This was the first postulate. The second postulate was that these atoms are indivisible. The atoms are indivisible. After dividing an element, a stage is reached where it can't be divided any further. And this stage was given the term atoms. And this atom can neither be destroyed nor be created in a chemical reaction. For example, again we will take this reaction. C plus O2 to give CO2. Here, the reactants are getting combined to form the product. They are not getting destroyed. They are just converting their form from reactants to products. So, this proves the second postulate. The third postulate proposed by Dalton was all atoms of one element have the same mass. For example, oxygen is present in different compounds. One compound is, another is H2O2, another is CO2. So, oxygen is present in all these different compounds. But in all these different compounds, the properties of oxygen atom is the same. Its mass is the same, that is 16 gram. And oxygen is oxygen only in all these compounds. Its properties are not getting changed. This was the third postulate, that all atoms of one element have same mass and chemical properties. In the example, the uh, element was oxygen. And oxygen, no matter it is present in how many different compounds, it will have the same mass and the same chemical properties. So, this was the third postulate. The fourth postulate was, atoms of different elements have different mass and chemical properties. In the third, uh, in the third postulate, we discussed that same element are having same mass. In the fourth postulate, it was discussed that different elements will have different mass. For example, let's talk about two atoms, H, O, and also let's talk about the carbon atom. H is having a mass of 1 gram, oxygen is having a mass of 16 grams, carbon is having a mass of 12 grams. These are different and all of them have different chemical properties as well. So, this proved the fourth postulate that all these are different elements and having different mass as well as chemical properties. The next, pro uh, the next postulate was atoms of different elements may combine in the ratio of small whole numbers. For example, two atoms of H combine with one atom of oxygen to form one molecule of water. The atoms, they always combine in the ratio of small whole numbers. Here, the H is combining in the number of 2. Like 2 H atoms are combining with 1 oxygen atom to form 1 molecule of H2O. Remember, this is not a chemical reaction. I am explaining here that they combine in the ratio of small whole numbers. Like, atom is not combining in half or 3 by 4th atom is not combining. Either one atom will get combined, two atoms will get combined, three atoms will get combined, four atoms will get combined and so on. 3 by 4 atom will not combined and 1 by 2 atom will not get combined. So this was the next uh, fifth postulate. The next postulate was in a compound number and kinds of different elements are constant. Let's understand it also with an example. Let's take the example of water only, H2O. Chemical formula of water is H2O and water is made up of two atoms of hydrogen for every one atom of oxygen. And the chemical formula the two, uh, to make water, two H atoms will com get combined and one oxygen atom will get combined. And the chemical formula of water will always remain H2O, be it the tap water, be it the water from the waterfall, ocean water, 
or the water from the sea to form water two h will get combined and one o x water atom will get combined so this was the sixth postulate of john dalton now what were the drawbacks of dalton's theory dalton proposed that atoms were indivisible hard spheres that cannot be broken down but this wasn't the case as later we saw that atoms can be broken down into protons neutrons and electrons that means atoms can further be get get divided into neutrons protons and electrons electrons they revolve around the atom whereas neutrons and protons they lie inside the atom in the nucleus of the atom the second drawback was he was unable to prove the existence of isotopes he suggested that all atoms of one element have same mass and chemical properties we discussed it with an example we took the example of h2o2 co2 and h2o and we discussed that o in all these compounds are having same mass and chemical properties but after the discovery of isotopes it was proved that same element atoms of one element can have different masses too here we will take the example of h hydrogen there are different isotopes of hydrogen there are three different isotopes one is the protium another is the deuterium and another is tritium so in protium the mass is 1 in deuterium the mass number is 2 and in tritium the mass number of hydrogen is 3 so atoms of single element are having three different masses called the isotopes of hydrogen so discovery of isotopes was the drawback of dalton's atomic theory third postulate was a third drawback was the discovery of isobars dalton's theory suggested that atoms of different elements have different masses we took an example here also and i told you that h o and c are atoms of different elements and h atom is having a mass of 1 g O atom is having a, six, a mass of 16 gram and C atom is having a mass of 12 gram. But the discovery of isobars told that different elements can have same mass as well. Atoms of different elements were having different masses, but isobars discovery of isobars proved. that atoms of different element can have same mass as well and one such example of isobars is argon and calcium calcium atoms were having a mass number of 40 and an atomic number of 20 whereas argon the atoms of argon were having a mass number of 40 as well and atomic number 80 this proved the existence of isobars and hence it was the drawback of dalton's atomic theory so till now we discussed about the democritus atomic model then we discussed about the dalton's atomic model the postulates and the drawbacks the postulates and the drawbacks of democritus model was discussed as, as well so the drawbacks of dalton's atomic model was the discovery of isobars the discovery of isotopes and the discovery of subatomic particles our next atomic model is j j thomson's model of an atom or the plum pudding model
we will be discussing this in detail in the next portion thank you